What's happening guys? This is Rashad Waters and also Chuck Taylor. Chuck Taylor. And uh, of course we are two-thirds of Color Commentary. Uh, Danny will not be with us tonight because uh, he's going to take some time in order to reevaluate his uh, movie priorities. He did <laughs> not like um, Venom and so we're going to go ahead and suspend him for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> So what Charlie and I decided to do is go ahead and change things up a little bit. So um, you guys are going to get two for one in this video. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing the new movie, The Hate You Give. And Charlie's going to be reviewing First Man. All right. Mm -hmm. Then after that, what's up, Scotland Ward? Cool. Scott. Some of your new friends that you were talking about. Scott. Scott. Scotland in the house. Anyway, so, uh, oh, we're down to one of you. <laughs> Crystal Evans, what's going on? Anyway, uh, after we review those two movies, we're also going to be talking a little bit about James Gunn and him uh, going with Suicide Squad. So we're going to see what's up with that. So, of course, this is Color Commentary, where we give you views from a different side. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, my movie was um, The Hate You Give. And uh, this movie is is really a movie about the African American experience. So honestly, speaking, um, one of the the plot of the movie is basically the fact that you have this young girl who lives in the hood, um, like it's just a bad area. You know, things happen uh, in the hood. Uh, but her parents are relatively successful. Her mom is like a nurse. Her dad actually is a former gangster, but he owns a grocery or convenience store now. So they're doing pretty well. He's a uh... Is he still a gangster? No, nah, he's not anymore. So he's all tatted up and stuff, but so he's not a gangster anymore. He don't anymore. have the money for He's not the power, so he don't have his drug money going through his business. No, nah, he's not laundering. <laughs> he's, just, sure. he's just selling regular old cigarettes and sodas. <laughs> Sick <of> weed, nothing. <laughs> so anyway, um, she lives there, but her parents wanted her and her brothers, uh, uh, Sakani, which which I guess is the name of the shoe as well. I always thought that was Sosani. You know what the mountain shoes? Yeah. No. The, the sauce in the shoes. <laughs> S-A-U-C-O-N-Y. You don't, you don't know what I'm talking about? I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, this is a pretty... I'll this, Google It's that. a relatively popular brand. It's not like Nike or nothing like that, but I always thought it was sauce in the. But anyway, Sakani and Seven are her brothers, and her name is Star. And she goes to a, a private school that is majority white. And she talks about the fact that she has to live two different lives. Um, there's the hood star, and then there is the prep school star. Um, she ends up going to a party uh, back in the hood and after there's a shooting at the party she ends up leaving with one of her old friends that she's known for a long time and uh, if you can see from the trailers you kind of know what happens mm -hmm. they get pulled over by the cops um, the cop because the, the young man is arguing and fussing back and forth with them he asks the young man Khalil to get out of the car Khalil has his hands on the car and then Khalil why he would think that this was a good idea? That's that's the only thing that like made me like okay I don't know if I want to see this movie because that, that him doing that pissed me off. Right, like, you're going to play it right now. It's like it's not it's nothing new. It's like you know people we all know that what happens exactly at these at these type of events. Exactly. You're going to play with a with a brush. You did with a girl. Yeah, a brush. he went and reached in his car. Be smooth and, and grabbed a brush. Yeah, and he got shot up and he was killed. So you know the whole situation is now Star having to come to grips with her life now you know is she going to tell her friends in the new school she really doesn't want to because she doesn't want to be seen as i must try to get in here and they should not <laughs> go away <laughs> anyway she doesn't want to be seen as the um as the girl with the friend that you know that got shot it's, it's a really it's a really interesting experience goodbye bye Live. I know. That's the, that's the, that's the, you guys are watching this video live. <laughs> um, Edit that out. That's like... <laughs> but it's a really interesting I experience. Um, for me, I could relate to some of the things that were happening. Not so much the fact that I had to be two people growing up, but I did go to a majority white school and I did feel that disconnect actually on, on both sides. Um, with most of my classes, I wasn't in classes with a lot of my black classmates and so they kind of looked at me a certain way like oh you speaking this way you trying to be white or or whatever but then with the white kids even though they were cool i just didn't really connect with them in the same way that i wanted to you know with with my my brothers you know we didn't like the same types of music and things so i could really relate um this movie is a definitely a very interesting 
uh, microcosm into the African American experience. There's so many things, you know, in the bad neighborhoods at least, you know, when you can see the shootings, um, you can see the, the church at, um, that's happening there. Uh, so you see negatives and positives and they don't try to cover anything up. Um, one of the main characters is Anthony Mackey, who plays King, who's a drug dealer. Falcon and that? Yeah, Falcon. Cool! You know, but uh, he needs to stick to playing Falcon because his role was, was bigger in Avengers. As small as it is in Avengers, wow. his role, I mean, it's important, but it does, there's no, no building of his character yeah. at all. He's just, he just, he plays a, he's like your traditional villain. Tris it's yeah, like, I'm, I'm this it. way and this is just this how is I, I am. This is who I am, I don't change at all, this is what I do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. But it's understandable because there's so much going on in the movie dealing with uh, racism and what's going to happen uh, with the cop and how the neighborhood reacts to it. And initially, she's trying to keep it all secret, you know, and then... It doesn't stay secret because <laughs> nobody knows that she was there. You know, some people know, but nobody, but not everybody. So knows. the cop doesn't know that she was. There? No, the neighborhood doesn't. The know. neighborhood, okay. Right, and her boyfriend um, at the private school, who is white, uh, actually, he doesn't know. I saw that too on one of the trails. I was just like, okay, I, I'm confused. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, white so boyfriend. it's really interesting. Um, I will tell you that um, there's some really good acting going on by Star who is Amandala, uh, hopefully that's not spelled wrong on IMBD, Amandala uh, Stenberg. Uh, Regina Hall is in this, looking good. And also um, Russell Hornsby. And I didn't recognize his name. He plays the dad, Maverick Carter. He's the former gangster. He plays his role so well. It's really good, man. Yeah. Like, he's really compelling. He's a great dad with you know some baggage that he's been trying to get over and trying to instill his kids with something that's going to keep them safe. Um, but I really enjoy it. It's not like action field or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's not that type of movie at all. Um, you're just going to have to sit back and just take it in and just watch it for what it is. Um, any negatives I have for the movie, it's kind of like real life, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, the first part is there's no real, um, resolution to the racism, but we kind of saw that in Black Klansmen yeah. as well. When yeah. we got to the end of Black Klansmen, it's like... Mm -hmm. This stuff is still happening, and it's the same type of thing. The only thing that happens is a resolution is that, um, spoiler alert here, but the um, the black drug dealer goes to jail. <laughs> so that's the only resolution. Uh -huh. You know, the black guy goes to jail, but as far as um, dealing with the racism, there's, there's no... There's no resolution to that, and so that's it's unfortunate. So, so what do you feel the life. purpose of the movie is for? Like, when you leave the movie, do you think it has some type of impact? I think it does. Uh, hopefully, it does. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm it allows you, this people. Is your impact. What do you feel? Well, I'm hoping that other people will will feel a certain way as well. I mean, because I know these things. So mm -hmm. for me, it was. I just thought it was an interesting look on a lot of things that I know to be true. You know, mm -hmm. from the African African American experience. But I hope that other people that are not African American will be able to look at it and say, "Oh man, you're like, wow, I didn't really know it was like that." You know, perhaps the more of these type of stories that people see, maybe they'll begin to open their eyes to things. Um, the one, only other negative, and then I'll pass it over to Charlie, because I know he's I thrilled. I have some questions. Because no, Charlie's hold trying on, to hold, no, no, procrastinate hold on to get we'll, to the first man. We don't have to talk about the first man right now. <laughs> the only questions. other thing that I had an issue with, and again, this wasn't so much the movie, so much it was dealing with real life. Uh, she has a best friend who's also white. Um... And they also make a big deal about the fact that the white kids, like, kind of act black. But it's like, acting black is cool. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, they can do that and get away with it. But she can't because if she acts like that, then she'll be seen as being a, a ghetto or ghetto, what have yeah. you. You know? But anyway, yeah. but this is her friend that she's known for a long time. And it kind of comes out that maybe her friend is actually a little bit racist. Um, that she sees Star as, like, maybe one of the good ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, you're different than the others. And the reason I didn't like that so much is because as everything is happening to Star, she just pipes up. Like, mm -hmm. she doesn't, like, all the people, all the friends that she has at the prep school, she doesn't talk to them at all. She doesn't let them know what's happening. She reveals absolutely nothing. Like, nobody knows anything. So this is her best friend. She doesn't tell her anything. So the, the best friend is, like, looking at the news, and she sees the cop. She's like, oh, that poor cop. Because he's getting death threats and all these things are happening with his, his family, you know. Yeah. And she's like, oh, that. And Star just gets mad 
without giving another perspective to her. You know what I'm saying? This is your opportunity to say, no, listen, this is what happened, or think about it like this. Mm -hmm. And so the movie kind of ends with them being separated like that. And so, again, from the from the standpoint of any type of resolution to racism, there wasn't any. There wasn't an opportunity for her to say, no, listen, like, you might, you have this twisted. Let me help you to understand. And that just didn't, then there was no attempt made with that. So that was kind of disappointing. Other than that, though, I think it's a, I think it's a movie that you'll enjoy. Will I say that is it boring at times? No, it's, it's lengthy. It feels lengthy, but I think it's interesting um, all the time if you're interested in, in the subject matter. And I know right. it's based off of a book, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so the book, does that have more of a res resolution in the book? Man, I don't know. You know about books? You don't know about books? be reading? <laughs> nah, you did review did the read, movie. Yeah. So. Oh, real quick. So the hate you give, that's interesting, is um, Thug. The Thug? The hate you give. And, it, and the whole thing you is mean. based off of a line from Tupac. Uh, the hate you give, well, I mean, sorry, you know, he has t tattooed on his mm -hmm. chest, thug life. The hate you give, uh, little infants, else everybody. Oh, hey. Okay. <laughs> and it's, it's very interesting. There's a, uh, <laughs> the climax of the movie in, involves Sakani, and you can really see how everything comes full circle with that line. So, there we hmm. go. Other questions there, sir? I just, I guess with me, like, if I want to see it, I want to see... Like, what is this film going to do to help the cause besides just give me a... Since it's, since it's a fiction, mm -hmm. it's not based off of, like, a true event. Mm -hmm. like, if it was a true event, I can understand it ending where it does because it's trying to be a true event. Right. But since it's somebody fictionally wrote it, like, I thought they would have more of a purpose behind the ending of it to mm -hmm. maybe, hey, this is a... To bring awareness to certain things that are happening in our mm -hmm. community, how we need to come together, mm -hmm. and and but it doesn't seem like it did that. It seems like it kind of just told a story and then left it there. Well, it seems like that is what's happening with all the stories that are similar mm -hmm. to that. I don't know if you saw Seven Sec Seconds on Netflix, um, which involves another Regina, Regina King, and it's a very similar type of ending. There's just no resolution uh, to the racism there, um, yeah. and so I think the purpose is. It would be nice if, like, like when we see movies from the things back in the 60s and the yeah. 70s, you're like, oh, man, they won't let this kid go to school. Or they won't let him play in the football team. And they fought and they won and now they can play football. But it's like, I guess what the directors are trying to say is, but that's not what's happening. What's happening. Is that we're fighting and we're not winning, you know. And so it just is what it is, you know. So as far as... I, I wish it was differently. I, I wish it did end up differently, but I guess it is a reflection of what we see more often than not in reality. Okay. Well, there you that's go. That's a good question. There you go. Yeah, I have Hopefully some your questions. English teacher, teacher is, is yeah, listening. Like, that's that's, that's, that's a good question. I got, some, I got a, little, a little something up in here. <laughs> a little something. But, uh, so, the hate you give. That's what it's called? The hate you give. Hate you give. All right. That's it. So, I guess I have to Talk about my movie. Yeah, it's time for you to go oh, ahead and talk about the first right. man. I'll be over right, here sharing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've reviewed the first man. Uh, that's uh, you know based off of the uh, a famous astronaut Neil Armstrong, first man on the moon. The movie, let's say this. <laughs> it was not. A, it was not a best picture for me. Um, like they said in the trailers, I know they were saying it could be awarded for best picture. So, um, did you get the actor's name for me? Because man, no, I didn't, you know I'm not good with names here. on this. Um, I just say the guy off of you know the movie y'all saw the other day. So you know <laughs> the guy that plays Neil. He's he, he's been in a lot of movies. I'll give you his name in a minute. But if Neil acts like this, he did a wonderful oh, job. Oh, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. What I movie did know. we see that he was in recently? Um. What's the one? Uh, the movie that could have been a prequel to Venom? No, it was, it was one of the um, alien alien movies. It it wasn't one of those, but it was one of they're in the same timeline and the same. Yeah, I, guess, I said it could have been like the prequel to Venom. Like it was yeah, it was like Sony. it was like two thousand and like it was Blade Runner. That's what he was in. Blade Runner. Oh, okay. I he was in Blade that. Runner. That was the last thing I remember seeing him in. But um, so basically, in this movie, it it gives you, I guess, a good understanding on what it's like preparing to go to the moon and actually making that trip. Um, so I'm going to just talk about the good things first. 
Um, it definitely, during some of the hard times, I guess the scarier times in the, uh, the missions, um, or testing for the missions, or preparing for the missions, it definitely gives you um, a vantage point that you're, you feel like you're in the cockpit with Neil and some of the other astronauts. Because the way the camera angles are, you do feel like you're there. You feel like you're about to crash. You feel you feel nauseous at sometimes as the you know the screen just kind of goes around and around. So it does. Got a headache today. Yeah, so. that's probably why I have a headache because <laughs> watching like ah. Oh, uh, I'm not an astronaut. I can't prepare for this. But uh, so so those things they did they did a good job with. I guess having you kind of understand what they go through to be able to go into space. Um, it does uh, kind of give you a little backstory on why. Um, well, not really why it was important that America, um, I guess, really pursue space uh, exploration, but. It does give you the thought process on certain parties, certain people in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, on you know, you have you do have things happening in the world where people are having you know poverty. Um, I know New York. I think that it was like in the 60, 68, 65 to seventy ish years. So I think New York had that big outbreak with the drugs okay. in the Bronx. So they have they have a lot of things in the world that are going on. Mm-hmm. So and NASA is taking a lot of money to be able to you know try to get people to the moon. Right. So you have a lot of a lot of the citizens are wondering like, should we really be spending all our money on this to go to the moon? Is it really that important? We got people starving. We have places that people don't have food. But so, Russia though. Yeah, because you know <laughs> we, we want to beat the Soviets. That was that was one big thing that they yeah screw the Soviets. That's all they would say. Uh-huh. You know when they would do something good. So it's like you have a disconnect, I guess, with the space. Um, exploration or with NASA in general and society, so they had they're on they're kind of in their own bubble, uh-huh. and I think that's one thing they did a good job with um, allowing you to see that um, explorers and uh, people that that go on these type of adventures they're different than than you and me. Okay. They're they're not going to be focused on everyday things like you know saying hey to your family. You know, making memories with friends and things. They're going to be focused on, okay, my objective is to, you know, cross this sea. See if the world is is flat. Like, I'm only thinking about that. I'm only driven by this. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really care what's going on around me. I'm only going to be driven by focusing on my mission. Mm -hmm. So, his, Neil Armstrong's mission is to get to the moon. That's all he wants to do. Um, So, you find out, like, he's a weird guy. (laughs) Like, like he doesn't talk to his wife, he doesn't really talk to his kids. Like any type, any time she asks him questions, he just leaves or just goes off. I mean, he left her at a party one time when no, that, seriously, they were at a party and one of the guys said um, they were talking about one of the other astronauts that that didn't survive the first test, uh-huh. and he got. I guess he was like, I think he was like Neil. What do you think about this? And Neil was like, I would have to know the, the all the details to know how he felt on, on landing and why he didn't land correctly. And then he just walks out, gets in the car and leaves. And the wife like looks out the window like, okay, she wow. has to get a ride home by one of the other astronauts. Wow. And okay. I was like, okay, this guy is different. He's different. He <laughs> I doesn't... see why they made this movie. Cause nobody <laughs> would think that about Yeah, You wouldn't think about that about no Neil. So if he acts like, like if he, is that how he acts? He's awkward. You know, it was a lot of awkward, eye contact and just conversations that the other astronauts or the other people in NASA would try to have with him and he would just like okay and not say anything else mm-hmm. or just eat his food like nobody's looking at him or didn't ask him a question mm-hmm. and he's just focused on what he's focused on okay I mean, he's brilliant you know I mean you gotta be brilliant to be able to, to be an astronaut and to be able to you know pilot one or right. be the you know the, the leader of them to when they go up there so he's making all the decisions but Socially, he's disconnected mm-hmm. extremely. So that was a little hard to watch. So you're, if you are going to plan to watch this movie, be prepared. It is slow and it's very quiet. And <laughs> it has some uh, some action points at the beginning. And then you're going to have a long break that you're just going to have to learn just to, okay, I'm just here to learn about this person uh-huh. and see how he interacts and how they actually got this all together. Uh-huh. So, I mean... If that's the type of movie you want to see, you know, it may, it's maybe, you know, two thumbs up for you. But me, I kind of need a little bit more dialogue. 
Right. You know, I can't just look at a man looking into the distance. Constantly, the camera angles are like right on his face. Uh -huh. um, but I did say I was gonna say some positive things first. So let me let me try to think about other positive things. <laughs> try to let me try to come up with. So some the actual mission portion of the uh, like at the the later end of the movie. So when they're actually making it to the moon, that part is good. Okay. That that part is interesting. They have things that happen on the way. Um, you feel like you're kind of right there with them. And, you know, of course, you know, we land on the moon. He says this saying, and that's all she wrote. So, that, that end, the end of the movie is, is good. I, I, I kind of wish I kind of skipped more to the end. Mm -hmm. I would have probably enjoyed it better uh -huh. than having that long hour length of time yeah, of just, just looking. looking and failing and, <laughs> and people dying and he not really caring. <laughs> he may have cared, but he just doesn't show it. He doesn't uh -huh. do a very good job showing his emotions at all. Uh -huh. um, but now to the, some of the, the lesser things, the, some of the worst things about the movie. Um, he doesn't, he, it's hard. It, I guess in this type of movie, if I find myself wanting to do something else, I want to look at my phone, I want to read something and come back and finish the movie <laughs> What movie, was that, what movie was that you said that about before? Like, was that the Meg? Yeah. Said, Make sure you bring your cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was the Meg because the Meg had like some things going on. It didn't make sense, all, but it was stuff going on. You had more dialogue with people actually having conversations, uh -huh. conversing over here. And but him and his wife, I mean, she did a good job. She finally kind of, I guess, woman up by the end of it. And when they were going on to uh, his last trip, he was basically like. All right, let's just, let's just look at Neil's perspective. He's about to go to space right. next day. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't he doesn't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to say goodbye to his kids. I don't want to say goodbye to his wife. So he's just basically doing busy things to not talk to anybody so he can just leave when it's time for him to go. Not say bye or nothing. Huh, that, okay. Does that sound like a person? <laughs> like Does that sound like that makes sense no. for a person with a family? No. Okay, so that's she finally got fed up with that. Slammed the stuff down. He's like, you're just... She was, I think she was saying, um, you need to go talk to the boys before you leave. Mm -hmm. Because our friend that lives across the street, he dies in the movie. Spoiler. You can't <laughs> for watching anyway. You, I didn't tell you his name anyway, so I didn't really spoil anything. Right. But somebody dies that they're close to. Right. And their so neighbor. Don't get attached to the person that, that <laughs> lived. And say, oh, that's the guy. That across the street. He's going to die. He's going to... He's, he dies. She 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 says that you know he she doesn't have a husband anymore and they don't have a father anymore. You're gonna go talk to your kids before you leave. Mm -hmm. And he's just like trying to do everything else but that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to have a conversation with them at all. And finally, she just makes them. She throws the stuff down and she goes wakes the boys up and they come to the kids' table and tell me this is how he talks to his kid. It felt like a press conference. <laughs> He sat at the table, his boys were sitting there looking at him, and he just stared at him. And then one of the little boys asked one question, Are you gonna what are you gonna say when you get on the moon, Dad? We don't know if we're actually gonna make it to the moon. That if everything has to go exactly right for us to be able to do that. Blah 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 blah. And then he says, such and such, such and such. And he, he's basically like, does anybody else have any more questions? Uh -huh. That's how he ended what? his conversation <laughs> with his sons and his wife. And finally, the oldest son asked, "Are you know, are you gonna die? Or, um, are you not coming back?" Uh -huh. And he was like, "Well, there's a lot of things that could happen. We don't know. But what if you don't come back?" And he just kept trying to go around, and they just got silent. They did one of their close-ups to his face, and went on to the next scene. So wow. <laughs> we don't really get very much dialogue with this guy. So I don't know how. Um, it had to be hard to actually make this movie because. If that's how he, I mean, if he's like, is, well, real quick, I don't even know this. You know, Arthur's alive. No, he died. Last okay, when he died. Okay, okay. I, I didn't know. I don't follow astronauts. Uh, but I'm trying to think, like, how yeah. they explain. Yeah, remember, who, you remember everybody died in 2017? Yeah, you're right. That was okay, that, he that was, died he was in 2017, too. Okay. So I was trying to figure, like, how did he, they just have to go find other people that were around Neil to explain to him how Neil acted. And I think the actor was like, so I'm gonna have like a paragraph of lines for the whole movie, or a two-hour movie. I'm just gonna say, mm, okay, and look <laughs> off in the distance. So get practice <laughs> looking, looking though, man. Get get it right. This movie, I wish it was a documentary. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been more interesting having a voice 
kind of telling us what's going on with space. Uh, but they try to let you see, uh, I guess, an inside look of what it is to be Neil and the astronauts and what do they sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And they do a good job with that. It's not very interesting, though. So I'm just going to let you know. It's not... It, you you might want to just come come in a little bit later in the film and you probably get an awesome movie because mm -hmm. when they actually get to space and things start happening it's pretty good it's pretty good but you know I'm gonna leave it up to you you definitely can check it out it definitely is you know based off of you know a real event we we really did go to the moon I know we have these flat earthers and right. everything else going around oh we didn't really make it as yeah, they just the CGI that the question that. though is did we really go to the movie theater that's the question. <laughs> That is the question. I did. Did we go to the theater? He did. He went to the I don't know if I did or not. It might have just been recreated. Right. But let's go to the to the next topic. Are you having questions for me? Yes, I do have some questions. He has questions. You know, actually, as you're describing it, though, it actually sounds pretty interesting. I know you just said, we, we talked before the show, I know you didn't want to say this, but I'll say it. <laughs> but as you're describing it, it really, uh, oh, your PC4 went to rest mode. Look at that. Let's turn the camera around so people can see that. Anyway, uh, I don't forget what movie I'm talking about now. I'm talking about PS4 movie. Anyway, um, what you're describing to me really sounds like somebody that's on the spectrum. You know, which I guess, you know, that, that was a time where that wasn't probably known as much. Mm -hmm. You know, probably kids would just... And also, I think it, it depends on where you were on the spectrum. Like, if, if they knew about it, mm -hmm. you probably had to really be cut off from society for them to label you as being autistic or what have you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are a lot of people who are highly function functioning aut uh, autistic people. I don't know. What do you call them? Is that autistic people? Don't ask me. You know, I'm not the PC autistic. police. Yeah, I'm not. There's a lot of people who are highly functioning. So and so what that means is that they're able to, uh, hey, Danny, what's going on, man? We're talking, about, talking about? We're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about Venom. <laughs> Talking about the first man, I just gave my review on the first man, first man. Painfully so. Uh, yes, it was a hard watch, but I did it. But anyway, you know, there are a lot of people who are um, highly functioning on the autism spectrum. And all that means is that they're able to, you know, go to work, do do things, but they may not pick up on the social cues. Yeah. You know, and so as you're describing it, it's like, gosh, that sounds just like it. You know, he's you're not able to right. really communicate with his kids that well. He doesn't... Um, He's not. He's just not able to be very personable. Yeah. But if you ask him a question, he can answer. He can answer. You know, he can handle things. So. He definitely. He definitely seems like that is where I, I don't know. I kind of feel kind of bad, you know, claiming that somebody is that way. If it's based off of the movie, it definitely seems that mm -hmm. that, that could be the case. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a brilliant guy. I mean, you gotta be brilliant to be an astronaut in, anyway. But he had no sense of social skills at all. Mm -hmm. I mean. I don't. I mean, his daughter dies. Oh really? And spoiler, in the, spoiler, in, spoiler in, the, in the in the in the in the beginning of the movie. But uh -huh. the funny thing is, you don't really know that she died because you see her, <laughs> and then it goes to the next scene, and then you hear you know somebody says sorry about your daughter when he's trying to be an astronaut. But I'm like, what happened to the daughter? I just saw the daughter like, like uh -huh. five minutes ago. Did she die? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I guess she died. All right. That that's how we. That's what we knew. She passed away, I don't know how, but... And that's probably why they started right there. Because, you know, to show um, the impact of that on a regular person, well, not a regular person, but on most people, mm -hmm. versus the impact on him. Because mm -hmm. when they said that, he probably didn't re really He didn't even respond. Either. He was like, oh, I think when they were asking him about, like, questions about being an astronaut, it's like, well, he said, sorry about your daughter. And he was like, is that a question? He was like, "Wow." Well, he was like, "Well, is that is this is you no know, losing your daughter? Is this going to have some type of effect on the mission?" He was like, "Well, l logically, it would have some effect." And then he goes to the next question. That is amazing. So he it definitely is a harder guy to read. I don't know how many conversations we could have with a guy like that. Uh -huh. um, so, but but all in all, it's a decent film. But just be prepared; it's going to take you going on a very slow. Moving roller coaster. You're going to be going up like this the entire hour and a half, <laughs> and then you'll finally get to go down a little, a little, a little, a little, a little bump, and then they'll end the movie. So <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> That's funny. Um, 
But I, you know, it sounds to me like it's all about again managing your managing your expectations. And real quick, let's get some shout outs here. We got Eric Green in the house. What's up, big man? How you doing? We got his own uh, Mr. DJ Quick DJ Green over there, and of course D'Angela <laughs> Taylor. What's up, D'Angela? What's up, my baby? Right, she's a couple about twenty. Are y'all having like a battle with the with the? <laughs> wow! Look at the like, world. Look at like, right here. <laughs> By the way, uh, she thank needs, you, Mr. Danny Quick. She needs your iPhone. My iPhone. Is it? See that? She left your note. I don't know. If Monica left that or did. Oh, uh, it's not like my, it's not my daughter. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get the iPhone later. <laughs> I guess. But anyway, um, yeah. It, if they realize that, like, if if that's really the condition that he had, and they advertise it as that, like, oh, Neil Neil Armstrong was actually on on the autism spectrum. And then you're looking at it from the perspective of, wow, look at this man that was able to accomplish all of this despite right. that. Then it probably would have been it's, a very it's different awesome movie. movie then, because you feel completely different. Right, exactly. I didn't know that going into I talked to you. I'm like, this guy is strange. Right. <laughs> you're like, he sounds like you have autism. I feel bad now. <laughs> Why did you make me feel bad, Rashad? I didn't know I was picking on a handicap person. Like, because I'm the guy that calls people out all the time. Right? All the time. <laughs> Picking on Neil Armstrong. Sorry, Neil. <laughs> it's us up, Monica. Hey, honey. My goddaughter here. His daughter. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Saxophone. She needs your saxophone. saxophone. Where is that at? You have a saxophone? I don't know. We'll figure it out. In the world. So anyway, oh, oh the my next... other question. Last question is, um, so we saw a lot with Hidden Figures. So did they reference that at all? Or did they just pretend like black Absolutely people didn't Absolutely not. Anymore? I don't think I saw a black person on the movie at all. The only time I saw a black person when they were doing a rally and it was a black guy doing some type of spoken word and he was talking about um, I can't I don't I can't I don't have enough money to pay my rent but the white man's on the moon and you hear a little shang shang mm -hmm. I can't do this but the white man's on the moon like he just basically went down the whole lot so that's the only time I saw a black guy on the, so yeah they didn't use hidden figures at all I didn't know that they they were part of that. Yeah, yes, based, on, was, based, on, whole based, based on this the moon. based on this movie, they weren't a part of anything. Wow, it see, was, that's why we need movies like Hidden Figures because you see that stuff just gets covered up. I mean, you saw in Hidden Figures that not only was uh, Taraji Henson's character important and, mm -hmm. and the and the three or four other people she was with, but they had like whole departments of black women that were yeah. doing calculations and things like they that. They did nothing of that. They had the same the, the white guys in the. You know, all all in there in the NASA people. They may have just skimmed over that part. They didn't really go into the details on how they were going to get to the moon. Mm -hmm. I think they saw, like, they had one little diagram of what they were going to do, how they would mm -hmm. make it to the moon that they played on, like, a commercial. Mm -hmm. But they didn't say the, what took, what type of math they used to make that that's happen. A, that's a dog one shame. So. I mean, they could have at least... Having seen that movie, it did pretty well. At least could have had one random black woman... Somewhere in there, so we can at least say, "Oh, there's you know, that's the lady." You know, let's see here. Uh, that's more. What's up, Morgan? It's a wait. I ain't watch it yet. That's okay. Uh, Charlie says you shouldn't watch it. So. <laughs> I'm talking about First Man, Morgan. So it's not. It's not the other movie you were talking about. I don't think I gave a review for mine. It's hard to say for mine. I think that a lot of people will enjoy it. Um, you think so? Yeah, it may not be for everybody. Like, and tell them again what movie you reviewed. I reviewed uh, The Second Man. <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> I reviewed The Hate You Give, a movie about uh, the African American experience, particularly as it uh, pertains to a young girl and police shootings. Very, it's a very, it's a very good movie. It's a good movie. Um, I'll go ahead and recommend it for for everybody. And maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. But it won't be because it's not a good movie. Mm -hmm. um, the acting is, is very good in there. Um, but some people make that they just want action movies and that's it, you know. Or yeah, they don't want I, movies that some very some deep. movies are harder to watch, you know, because we go to movies to kind of get away from them, right? Life. Yeah. So exactly. we're going to a movie that's kind of right hitting us right, you know, in those nerves. Like you know, maybe we don't want to see that because mm -hmm. I, I can't. I want to pay money to kind of enjoy myself, right? Not to just get worked up, <laughs> get mad. Exactly. And, <laughs> the whole whole quiet theater at the end again. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Black Casman was definitely like that. We didn't say nothing to nobody. We just walked directly out. Look at each other. <sighs> real quick shout out to uh, Kenny Millett real quick. He said that we sh they should have at least had a token 
in that yeah, movie. Yeah, they should have. They he wasn't in the, he wasn't in there. He won't even pushing carts, you know, bringing them water or nothing. He didn't have nobody in there. <laughs> they had no help at all. They didn't have as a at, <laughs> had no need for us in the movie. Yeah. Hey, real quick about First Man. Um, one thing it felt like it had it couldn't have been a large budget for this movie because okay. it felt like they kind of shot it in probably like an office building. And they used the basement maybe as the actual part that they went up to space. Because uh-huh. you didn't have any type of special effects. I mean, I've seen so many advertisers talking about, see this in IMAX. Why? You don't want to see this movie in IMAX. You want to see his face in IMAX. Because they, they spend 90% of the movie just right in front of Neil Armstrong the entire time. Like, you're just watching his his non-facial expressions. <laughs> and him not make any sounds for the entire movie in and the music was not very gearing. No, it didn't, it didn't give you any type of reaction. Nothing. Uh-huh. It was it was pretty boring. I'm going to just go ahead and say oh, it like wow. that. The movie was boring. So First Man was boring. I'm sorry. It it's probably has... Uh, some people probably loved it. I didn't like it. It, it was hard for me to watch it. He called it a B movie. <laughs> a B movie? <laughs> I wouldn't even give it a B. I would have had to have my phone in, the, in there and like... Like, if it comes on TV, like, it's definitely something that you probably won't be paying attention to. Uh-huh. Until, like, something exciting Particularly happens. Particularly since Taraji Henson's not in it. I mean, or <laughs> some, you know, the person that she played. I mean, yeah, she's she not, on, she not in there at all. We, we're, we're going back to that again? Yeah. Uh, a real quick shout out to Tori Newton there. So, and, Tori, uh, she just got person. married. He just got married. That's, oh, that's all right. Tori, Congratulations. Tori. Hopefully your married man marriage now. is better than Neil Armstrong's. Yes. But apparently yes. there's hope because, I mean, that man, he can pull a woman and he got pulled, two he kids. He had two kids, too. He actually had three, you know, and we know what happened. That, that man mm-hmm. was just straightforward. He was. He was just he like, was like, I'm focused on I'm my objective. To, I, I want to take you home. And this is you're going to be a happen. wife. You're going to have 3.5 kids. Right. And you're going to wash dishes. <laughs> and wait for me to come home and not talk to you. <laughs> That's basically what his objective was. <laughs> Oh. D D said, "Watch it win Oscar. It better not, boy. It better, not over boy, that, that win an Oscar. If we don't ride over nothing else, we have to ride it. <laughs> Black Panther better definitely. Black Panther's a way better movie than that. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> yes, his acting skills. I don't even know how good of his acting skills were because he didn't do anything. Right. It's kind of like you have to. <laughs> how hard is it to act to not act? You know, that's interesting. Yes, you're right." <laughs> There you go. That's best actor right here. Tyler Taylor. Chuck Taylor. <laughs> That's Neil Armstrong in a, in a nutshell in the movie. All right, so let's get into some stuff that we both All right, yes, about yes, here. some fun stuff. Let's okay. go. So, James Gunn, um, the famed and now infamous director of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, as well as the, uh, I guess he wrote the script as well? well he helped with he helped the Infinity the War. Oh, yeah, with yeah. Infinity War as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um... He um, is potentially going to be writing the screen screenplay for um, what in the world? What in the world? Stop this! Somebody's trying to hit you up. I see that. I guess I must be getting all the notifications all at once. <laughs> live show. Live we shows. Live. That's what happens Turn when you're your live. Stuff off. I thought I did. <laughs> but, uh, Trump supporters will love it. <laughs> That's what, he, that's, what, that's what Kenny said. Uh, who said that? Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best god darn movie he's ever. About, of course, he's talking no, about. No, actually, the they man. they they won't love it because they're taking they're make, they're taking all their money for, to go into space. Well, no, you're right, Trump. Because what he said, we need to be the. We need uh, to go to Mars. No, we need to be. Uh, what's he called? The space squadron or? Uh, space force. Space force. Mm-hmm. Next generation. Yeah, so yeah. they would like it. Yeah, you're probably right. There you space go. Space force. So so uh, that movie is for conservatives, and um, the other one, um, the hate you give is for liberals. <laughs> We're divided again. We just can't get it together. So anyway, uh, yeah. So James Gunn, he was, of course was fired from Disney because of some tweets that he said in the past, which were they very controversial. Yeah. So delete your delete stuff. Your stuff so you now uh, Warner Brothers, who is failing big time overall. <laughs> They've got a couple good hits, but they're failing overall. I think Aquaman's um, going to be good. I think Aquaman is going to be good. It's going uh, to hire James Gunn, or has hired him, to do the screenplay. <laughs> Ken is going to join the screenplay. <laughs> no, join him. Um, and possibly direct the movie. And Charlie, I'm just here to tell you, I'm excited about this. I like, am too. I mean, I think I... this is going to be... For me, the way I look at it is like this. I think Aquaman is going to be a good movie. Mm-hmm. I think Shazam is going to be a good movie. 
I think Wonder Woman 1984. I'm actually not convinced on that one. I the whole see, premise of I need of to it, see a trailer with kinda, that one. Yeah. It's like, I need to see a trailer with that one. And is the same guy in the movie again? The one that died? I guess. Because I saw him being... He's, he's immortal, I guess. Like... You know, I'm, the whole premise of it being 1984, that it sours me all the way from the beginning. Like, well, know. I guess, you know, Captain Marvel is, what, 1990 Well, it's going to just be Wonder Woman 2. Yeah. Wonder Woman 1984. It just kind well, of, you know, that this is what they think. They know they had a good thing with Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what the heck was going to happen with Justice League. Uh -huh. So they was just, hey, we're just going to make a film that doesn't include anybody else. We're going to have it. In, <laughs> right. in this range, That's what we put and in then we'll keep it safe. Right. So if we don't. If we can have a good movie, we don't have to have anything that affects Justice League at all. So that's what they did. There you go. The next one will be ninety four. Nineteen eighty four subtitle. Two no thousand and one. Right. <laughs> subtitle. No one else is in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Batman is a teenager, maybe you know. <laughs> um. But I don't think any of those movies that we just mentioned are strong enough to save the entire franchise. I think they're good enough that Aquaman can have a sequel, Wonder Woman can have a sequel, Shazam can have a sequel, but I don't think they're strong enough to get people excited about the DCU overall. But I think that James Gunn coming to Suicide Squad could potentially be the thing that rescues the whole um, Warner Brothers DC universe. I think it could, because mm -hmm. if he delivers for them with those characters, the same type of thing he did for Guardians of the Galaxy, people will then be excited to see them. Because it's not just the characters that you all know. It's yeah. like, if if um, Suicide Squad is good, that opens it up for them to be able to use other characters that you may not be familiar yeah. with. And you can bring them in, and then maybe give it five or six years. All right, let's do Superman and Batman again. Because the one flaw, the major flaw with uh, the DC Universe is you can't do it without Batman and Superman. It's that's impossible. just how that's just how the comic books are written. Yeah. They're not they're not spread out enough versus like Marvel has Fantastic Four, they've got X-Men, they've got Avengers, and they've got Spider-Man. They get multiple different properties that are only tangentially uh tan tan tangentially uh um get it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Somewhat related to each other. Okay. <laughs> and so they can do either one of them. Like when Spider-Man came out, he didn't have to have anybody else. Same thing with X-Men, you know? Yeah. But the the DC properties are not like way. Any cartoon you see is going to be Batman and Superman or young Batman and Superman. <laughs> yeah. You know, Batman and Superman plus a whole bunch of <laughs> other people. A whole bunch of people. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what they've done. Batman in the future. <laughs> So you can't do the DC Universe without them, but if Suicide Squad is good, they can start to build up um, their whole character list and then bring us Batman and Superman again in the future. So I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be good. I, I say, I'm excited, but then I'm also like, hmm. I wonder what he's, because he can't make it like Guardians of the Galaxy because that's going to be like, oh, that's all you can do? Like, Why can't he? I don't think, I don't think it's going to, if it's like a second rate, Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. it's not gonna work for us. But it, it has to be something different. But it he, can because he's not with because Guardians of the Galaxy might die. Well, I don't really care. But I'm saying like it's, if it's the same thing that I'm gonna get from Guardians of the Galaxy in that in this same movie, I don't know. It just kind of seems like man, can you do something different? Like I thought you would have more of a you know range range, mm -hmm. yes. To be able to, you know, find something in this movie, make it great. So, I mean, that's the only way I can really say he's a great director. If he just used the same script from Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm like, okay. They could have just kept their money <laughs> in that case. If they're just going to copy it, something that's already existing. I think um, one thing with, that I wonder is he, who he's going to recast. I know now that Charlie Jared Leto's not going to be in this movie. Yes, yeah, thank God. Yes, because uh, him and Jared Leto don't really see eye to eye. Oh, really? Yeah. They have history? Yeah, he uh, he uh, kind of it's kind of weird. Jeff Jeff um, James is he don't really he like to stay in the spotlight, but uh, okay. he sent some tweets to uh, oh, to Lord. Jared. <laughs> uh, I said Jared. J <laughs> What's his name? Jared. Yeah, yeah Jared. Jared. Uh -huh. Jared. They sent some tweets to him talking about basically somebody had accused him of uh, uh, getting with underage girls or something like that, and okay. he like jumped in the tweet or something like uh -huh. that, or the um, the message with him, and he was kind of throwing some jabs at him. <laughs> okay. So I was like, oh. So, and, no, knowing that he was in Suicide Squad last time, I was like, yeah, that's probably 
He's probably just going to be doing more reads now because I don't think that they're going to be able to work together mm-hmm. at all with that. And, <clears throat> no, I, I heard Batista. That'd I mean, that would be great. He, I, I was thinking, like, who he could play. Like, they can definitely change change the uh, uh, the crop dude if they want to keep him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They can put Batista in him right there. There you recast go. It. Don't recast have to it. Make we don't even have to know that was him. Mm-hmm. It's like, because like, we couldn't tell who that dude was. <laughs> <laughs> he was like a big monster. So, right. we made Batista that. He's already built anyway. Mm-hmm. And wears makeup all the time. Mm-hmm. So Green makeup. Yeah, green makeup. Yep, so. And I'll, and I wonder if they're going to keep, um, they should keep Will. And, uh, we'll take yeah. Yeah, but hey, you never know. A new direct, a new uh, director and writer, you might. Hey, I wanted my own people. I'm gonna do a different set of superheroes or bad guys to make my own mm-hmm. imprint in what I think the uh, Suicide Squad should be. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's some questions there. I think it could be definitely be good, mm-hmm. but it has he has to take his time with it. Mm-hmm. DC needs to take their time. And give us good things to stop trying to rush out stuff just to compete with. And stop trying to control it. Yes, yes. Let give somebody do. some freedom right. and let them be creative and give us a good movie. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think that's... Yeah. I'm going to wait and see. I am excited, but I am also a little nervous as well. But I, I um, also I saw that they, they gave uh, Ben Affleck uh, a script, I believe, mm-hmm. of a new Batman. So, he may be staying on as Batman. Okay. So I don't know if that's good or bad. Maybe they make him if it, if they make him like he how he was um, at the beginning of uh, Batman v Superman. Mm-hmm. Like he was that kind of dark guy. Mm-hmm. Like he was pretty cool on there mm-hmm. until like the movie was was a drag. It could have been done better, but mm-hmm. I think he played a pretty good Batman. When but he, he doesn't know Bruce Wayne though. I like him. He's like he's probably the best Batman. Mm-hmm. But he's no he doesn't do a good Bruce Wayne. At all, yeah. Like he he's, just, he's just um, he's mad all the time. Yeah, he's he's, like, like, he's that old Bruce, so he's like he don't, yeah, he's he, old Bruce he, from he Batman, uh, Batman the, Beyond. Yeah, he don't do any type of fun. Like yeah, you're right. Because the what's the other guy? Um, Christian Bell. Christian Bell. Yeah, he had a whole different character. Like you definitely couldn't think he was Batman. Right, like, exactly. In public, so yeah, I, I understand what Man, you're getting. Mean there. dude, he's definitely Batman. <laughs> <laughs> He spent all his time with some old man. Right, he looked like he looked like he walked around kicking puppies and stuff. Like, yeah, that's that's bad. So. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm I'm different than Charlie. I think that uh, I think if it's basically the same movie, I think it will still work because people want people are excited about that Guardians of the Galaxy mix, and with Guardians of the Galaxy, with him not being there, Guardians of the Galaxy could fall apart or potentially go away. I don't think see see that's just y'all just thinking too much much into James. James is great. He got it started. But they already like the group of characters they have already built, like Rocket group. But it's the writing. Somebody has to write the characters. I, but to you work. don't think there's anybody I mean, we have a ton of good Marvel movies we that do. they can take some things that he has in there mm-hmm. and still come up with an even better movie, I think. I'm not saying it will. I'm not saying it will bomb. I'm because just saying Jay, it could. We, we, I don't. I don't. I think sometimes we we don't really see like some of the other movies. They were good, but there were some letdowns in some of the movies too. Like, like the Iron villains. Man 3. The villain. I'm not talking. I'm talking about James Gunn's movies. Like uh, the first Guardians of the Galaxy. The villain. He was not the greatest. Mm-hmm. You know. I like. I like the interaction of the team, but the villain was like. Oh, like, this is kind of stupid. Who was the villain? You know, um, the dude with the... Oh, yeah. With the Thanos, hammer. Thanos Jr. <laughs> the talking junk to Thanos. Right. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna come and kill you, Thanos. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Like, they, uh, he he wasn't... He didn't really do that good in the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, let's see who else. On the second one, did you do like the second one better than the first one? I like it. I like it much better. I know people are divided about that. Okay. People, you I'm either a, like I, one or you like. I, the other. I have. I mean, it has some good points, uh, good spots in both of them. I like them both. Uh-huh. Um, I actually like the first one a little bit better than the second one. Uh-huh. But you know, it's it's not like he made a flawless movie. I mean, it's no Black Panther. Or anything. Nah, it's no Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> throw that out there, or you Black Panther haters. No Black cool. Panther. All right, guys. Well, I guess you have listened to us. So um, check out our comments. Also, shout out to my my man Freeman who left a comment saying. Uh, you check it out later. Uh, you check out our live show later, I guess. Thank you for checking us out. Check it out Whenever later. you do. Right. Thank you for checking our live show out later. <laughs> but anyway, uh, any closing thoughts there, sir? 
No, no, no. We're, we're um. Oh, we forgot to even say who we were. I can't face party easy. You, you did? Okay. Said your name. I didn't All say right. you. Can't no face spiel. party easy here. So my lovely wife D'Angela Taylor, she's on here. Hey, taking send me some some I love yous to me. But yeah, we're definitely keeping it busy. Um, but we're gonna be looking to do some fun events. We've been talking. Um, we have a lot of we got the Spider Verse coming up. We got um, uh, the Dragon Ball Z movie is coming out. We're looking at doing something big with that. Um, we really? know it's a lot of a lot of Dragon Ball Z guys here. We I love Dragon Ball Z. My kids done watched a few sagas now, so they're really into Dragon Ball Z. So we're definitely Is this live or about, animated? It's it's animated. Okay. Nobody wants to see a lot of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> they tried it before, it's not gonna work. But uh yeah, it's uh it's definitely keep us keep looking keep checking us out. Um we're gonna put some updates on there when we actually uh you know, getting things finalized. But look for those Aquaman, Spider Verse um, definitely Infinity War for next year and maybe something for Captain Marvel and Dragon Ball Z. So, hey, yeah, keep it on. Look at all that love you get. I know, I'm getting all the love now. Mm -hmm. all right, let, let me try, let me try. Right, if my wife is watching right now, you go up and throw some love down. Anytime now. KFH Party Easy. Yeah. Any, any time. <laughs> We're ready. We lost viewers. <laughs> <laughs> we lost viewers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course I'm not. Uh, hit a cry. <laughs> cry. <laughs> <laughs> and of course I'm Rashad with Block Band Music and Publishing and <laughs> what we provide. Wow. Hey. Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> Uh, I'm Rashad with Block Band Music and Publishing where we provide music and instruments to marching bands all across the nation so make sure to check us out I'll be live um, not next Monday but the Monday after that back again on the marching podcast where we talk about uh, marching bands just like you love alright so again this has been our show make sure you um, once the show goes on YouTube I guess we had to figure out how to do that since we didn't do it I, on YouTube I know how to do that Charlie would do it right Take so uh, make sure you uh, leave a, a comment Check out the description so you can see some of our other shows, other things that we've been talking about. We look forward to Danny coming back sometime in the future because he would have loved, he would have hated my movie. He would have been ambivalent about my movie probably. He would have loved mine. He would have loved it. He this is this, such an Oscar. This, is, this movie man. was epic. Like what? You just, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking I about. I feel the same way as Neil Armstrong. <laughs> when I get home, I don't want to talk to my kids either. <laughs> Let's go back to work. There you go. So playing. make sure you leave us a like. No and, joke. A, and of course, remember you gotta subscribe to survive. survive. There you go. This is Color Commentary where we give you views. From a different side. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Armstrong impression, just to let you know. <laughs>